G'day legends and straight away, sorry about the audio quality in this one, it'll be fixed in tomorrow's video. I forgot me bloody Bluetooth mic, alright? Let's move on. Every single month, there is a pre-fight press conference, and as we all know, they have been getting worse and worse as time has slowly gone on. It seems like they have shortened them down to 15 minutes of stage time. They are pretty much the most predictable thing ever. It's the same questions over and over again. And no differently, at UFC... Saudi Arabia Riyadh season presenting UFC Noche at UFC 306 pay-per-view. <clears throat> From now on, I'm just going to be calling it RSUFC NO36 or RUFSK 306. That's what I'm going to be calling it from now on. It's just too bloody much to call it the other thing. The questions are going to be the same this weekend as they are every single weekend. I don't even know why they bother. We could just have a soundboard at the moment. Hey, hey, Dana. How excited are you that this is finally happening? Diego, what does it mean to you to be here on Saturday representing South America? Marab, what do you think about representing Georgia on the biggest stage? It's the worst. It's absolutely the worst. The basic bitch questions that these guys ask could be fixed by just a giant red light in front of all the fighters. And they just move across the stage from left to right, lighting up the f lighting it up in front of the fighter, and each fighter gets 15 to 20 seconds to talk before their light goes out, and it just moves on to the next one. I, I, I cannot hear another fighter say, I am really excited about Saturday night. I can't. So today, I thought we could play a game of what should the UFC media ask the fighters to get some interactions going between them and their opponent? You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be much, but just a slightly leading question that the opponent will hear the, 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 the fighter talk about. They will have to push back on it. That's how you, you know, stir the pot, get a heated interaction, and then just like it is on the playground, you get to see a fight. How the hell do kids know how this works, yet paid media professionals act like they're version 1 of chat GPT? I don't understand it. So let me know some of your questions down there in the comments, and maybe we will make this a bit of a series leading into future pay-per-views. I asked the live stream about this yesterday, and Backwoods Backwoods answered me on the live stream, and he said I'd ask O'Malley if he regrets letting his lady sleep around and then telling the entire internet about it. <laughs> a little on the nose, backwards, backwards, but I think we could absolutely twist it with some leading questions, right? Like, if you if you were to ask Marab, say, Hey Marab, you haven't got a wife yet because you said you're very picky. What type of woman are you looking for? One who's a little bit more conservative? Or someone like your opponent, Sean O'Malley's wife, who is proudly admitting to pleasing the boys on UFC Fight Night? This would get a chuckle from the crowd. This would rub, sh rub Sean O'Malley the wrong way. This would get Marab to say, Oh, you know, I think more good woman, good wife. You know, Sean O'Malley, woman, not so much for me. You could follow up and say, Would you ever pick a woman like Sean O'Malley's wife? Or you could turn it around. You know, you could say, Sean, you're a happily married man. You got a beautiful family. You're very proud of your wife and the lifestyle that you live. And you're a young man. What do you think it is about Marab and his age that he doesn't have a wife or a girlfriend yet? This puts Marab now on the back foot. And Sean O'Malley could say something like, yeah, you know, just look at his face. Look at his face. Who would, who would marry a guy like that, you know? Do you see the friction that this would cause? Rather than asking Marab, hey, Marab, how are you feeling about this weekend? O'Malley would get ruffled by Marab's answer and probably say something, at least I can get a wife unlike that midget. <laughs> or maybe he would say something like, look at that little guy, what woman would want someone so small? That's why he has to pay women to be in his skits. It creates more of a back and forth, right? Moving down, you could be asking Shevchenko or Grasso. You could ask Shevchenko, hey, 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 Valentin. What do you think you are, is your op <clears throat> hey, hey Valentine? What do you think is going on in your opponent's mindset, knowing that she was gifted the last decision between the two of you? Do you see how this would stir the pot between them? Or you could ask Alexa, hey, hey Alexa, no woman has ever won her belt back at Valentina's age. What do you think her chances are at fighting you at such an age? Or you might say, hey Alexa, would would you mind throwing your shoes into the crowd during the walkout? <laughs> to Diego Lopez. 
right? Maybe we could throw it up there at Diego Lopez. Hey, Diego, how do you feel about Brian Ortega's ability to make the weight? As a true South American, have you ever heard the Eagles story? Get the crowd to laugh, get Brian Ortega to look bloody silly and realize that he read some Reddit threads somewhere. That Eagles story cannot be true. You could ask Brian Ortega. Hey, Brian, Brian, as a man that is known for pulling absolutely stunning women, I mean, they don't stick around, but we don't have to add that onto our question. We could say, hey, Brian, as a man who's known for pulling absolutely stunning women, what advice would you give to your opponent, Diego Lopez? This is a very easy setup. Look at Diego Lopez's haircut, right? Are we doing a comb over? Are we doing a mullet? What the bloody hell's going on here, mate? Brian, the Eagle monologue has gone down in MMA history. What kind of rebirth did you undergo for this weekend? Have you, have you learned how to strike yet? <laughs> I think we'll just go with, what kind of rebirth have you undergone for this weekend? Brian, you were known for pushing deep into the last rounds. You were able to take all of Yair Rodriguez's strikes. Even Alexander Volkanovsky had a hard time putting you away. Considering that the last time we saw Diego Lopez, he gassed out in the third round, what advice would you give him to help with his cardio? You see, this isn't a, what are you going to do on Saturday night? This is a, what advice would you give him to help with his cardio? Implying that his cardio sucks. You'd have to get Brian talking about how his opponent's cardio sucks. Obviously, Diego Lopez is going to have some backlash to that. That is what we want at a press conference, not 15 minutes of how do you feel about this Saturday night. Then, of course, we could turn it on Mr. Pink himself. Dana, you're a man who clearly loves food. What is it? Tacos? Burgers? What's your favorite Pop-Tart flavor, really, mate? You could ask Dana some follow-up questions, other than when are you planning to go back to Mexico City? We could say Dana Tomas Benalla has announced that he will be the backup for Stipe Miocic versus John Jones. Since they have both said that they only want to fight each other, like what happened last time when they both pulled out, John Jones because he was injured and Stipe because he didn't want to fight, who is the backup fighter for the backup fighter? Dana, some really interesting pricing decisions tonight. What drove the UFC to set the minimum price at the Sphere to $3,000 and then drop them down to 650 bucks? That would, that would ruffle Dana up. You might lose your media pass for that one, but that would definitely ruffle Dana up. And he'd probably say something like, oh, you, you know, the, the Sphere sets the prices, you guys. I got nothing to do with that. Oh, huh, what? What? The prices? The prices? Yeah, sold out tonight. It's going to be a record. At least we would get a fun moment of gaslighting Dana White other than saying this is going to be an unbelievable experience. You got to watch it. Tip. Chuck yours down there in the comments. Maybe we'll make a part two before UFC 306. Maybe we'll make a in hindsight video after the press conference. But also, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. And maybe we'll do a video like this again leading up to UFC 307. Seven comes after six, Doug. You fucking... <laughs> Until then, I will see you guys all in the next video. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a like. If it's your first time here, why don't you think about subscribing to the channel? You can always unsubscribe later. That's all good. Till then, see ya.